Hey guys, and welcome to part two of our Female Mage Design Lab. Um, while I'm doing my own little thumbnail, I'd like to thank you guys for giving me so much viewer participation um, over the past few days. Uh, it's been neat to see all of your entries, and we'll get to them shortly. Um, it seems most of them were just digital sketches. I said you could do anything you want. Uh, maybe one of them could be considered a freeform poetry because someone simply wrote big tits in the cat in the comments um, and that's kind of interesting and I'm actually gonna bring up one side of concepting that I haven't really talked about that much uh, because I've mostly been doing you know these kind of thumbnails that are very vague and kind of stimulating ideas that way but it's also important to just go from a completely logical and mental standpoint when you're doing a design. Uh, so for this one, I actually thought about it beforehand and I had some idea of what I wanted to do um, because I thought about, okay, what might a female mage be? That's the only description I was giving. That's the only real briefing. So I thought about it for a while, like female, I have to show off that it's female because that's one of the two words. So I thought maybe something, you know, feminine, maybe something like a dress or whatever. And then there's the mage part, which is the more important part, um, which obviously, you know, maybe you get into like MMO settings or, you know, RPG settings and you need to differ differentiate your classes. So um, obviously you think about who might be a mage or, you know, in their fantasy world, who might become a mage. And it's probably going to be someone that's uh, more from an educated, higher class, you know, status and uh, have access to either, you know, a library and education of books or maybe just access to these, you know, exclusive magical materials that provide these magical powers or whatever. Um, so with that in mind, I decided that I'd try to showcase a more, you know, fancy, richer character uh, by giving them, you know, more innate details and, you know, a fancier dress, a dress and uh, stuff like that. So when you think about, you know, fanciness, you think about, you know, bright colors and textures and stuff like that, which is generally associated with having wealth or, you know, anything like that. So anyway, I've kind of glossed over my own thumbnails, but here we go. I did one simple thumbnail, kind of focusing on the silhouette. Uh, but then you can see I copied it a couple times because I'm going to showcase a couple really easy ways to get multiple designs out of one image. And this first one is just to focus on color. Um, so I took my first original thumbnail and then I kind of went over it with white, went over the, all those black parts to kind of make it more of a line arty feel. And now I'm just kind of going through with colors and kind of poking in different colors to really establish my design. And uh, here you can see I'm just adding these little dots because I wanted to showcase that, uh, you know, kind of it's nice to add some different kinds of textures and uh, personality to your fabrics. You don't always just want to be plain colors. Um, this obviously is a horrible example because it's just like polka dots and looks like a giraffe or something. Uh, but I go through here another example. I took this little Gucci uh, texture that I just quickly Googled. So it's a Gucci texture. And ideally you would want it to be scaled down to fit the proper size, but I didn't take all that time and I just kind of quickly, you know, copy pasted and didn't scale it at all. Uh, but I just wanted to show that, you know, you can take a texture um, and quickly give your design a lot of, you know, flair and detail just by quickly popping in a pre-made texture. So I have that example of using color to create new designs. And this one's just going to be using the same silhouette, uh, but showcasing the example of kind of just um, taking the silhouette then blacking it back out, then doing different detail lines with your white brush. So it's basically just taking the same silhouette, but making a completely different design, just using um, different line work and stuff like that. So I gave this one like a mask or something. I don't know if our mage would have a mask, but it, it's possible. That's, that's something a mage could have. Um, they probably aren't going to have any heavy armor and stuff because you think about a mage and they probably just sit in the back, you know, acting fancy and casting their spells and they don't really want to get hit or deal with anything. Uh, they just want to be kind of spoiled and, you know, do their thing, do a lot of fanciness without having to actually get their hands dirty. Uh, but they could wear a mask because 
because let's say maybe there's some setting where you have a mage and they want to keep their identity mysterious so no one assassinates them or something uh, but I don't know you know you can make up your own story and that's kind of the once again the whole like thought process side of doing concept design versus the just strictly creating random designs and trying to let your visual library establish things uh, so anyway, I think that's it for my designs, and I'm going to jump right into your designs, and I'm giving them 20 seconds each. Um, I have a lot to get through, uh, so I'm just going to set them out 20 seconds each. I did them, I think, alphabetically, and I'm really sorry if I missed anyone. I tried my best. Uh, you might have noticed the comments section got a bit jumbled, and it was a bit messy. It was a bit hard to sort through. Um, so it was a learning process, and I think in the future I'll have different recommendations on ways to present stuff stuff and you know stuff like that but you know first time always a bit of a mess uh, much with everything you do in life so you just have to get through that and learn what you can uh, so let's get started with that so here we go first up we have 6a three on one it kind of shows us a traditional cloaked and hooded mage um, I would say to watch out for having your background colors blend too much with your character colors because it kind of makes the character seem unimportant or you know it just kind of blends into the background which you never want when you're showcasing in design uh, but next up is Adu, who shows us some traditional art which is always nice to see so we got a couple different design thumbnails it looks like the same design just different uh, thumbnails and they also do a close-up which is always a smart idea if you want to showcase a specific part of the design you do a close-up to kind of showcase it. Uh, so next up we have Ahoy Nate O who shows us a good way to come up with some uh, different designs and that's by assigning them themes. So you can see he kind of has three different themes and that's a smart way to get your brain thinking about different silhouettes, different design elements and that's how you can create some different designs. Um, next up we have Art by Tim L who apparently loves the show but he has this uh, <laughs> this uh, character here with a few skulls floating around so it's very kind of skullish and uh, necromancer-y uh, but some good elements there I like the way he did the skulls and maybe they just always float around and you know has that feel to it uh, but here we go artificial guy 100 who did I think something similar to what I was thinking and that you want to have a mage so they can be very innate and have all kinds of details and kind of very kind of uh, complicated clothing and stuff like that uh, but I would watch the proportions it seems like the waist is really low uh, Axelga 2112 I love this uh, presentation here it's very nice looking the way you did these thumbnails they look great and that one in the middle is especially interesting I love the way it's done and it's a very interesting silhouette and design so I really like that one uh, next up is Bondaferi and it seems like this person might be topless, but I'm not sure if that's just a weird coloring choice. Uh, but I like the draping that's going on on the bottom. But I would recommend that you always show the full character, do the legs just for practice, you know, especially when you're doing thumbnails it get those proportions down. Uh, so next we have Boy of Lull. And uh, we have some notes everywhere, which is, once again, a good idea because I'm playing the part of art director. You always want to make sure you have notes um, if you think something's not clear about what's important. Uh, but it looks like we have an hourglass on a stick, and uh, so maybe there's some kind of time mage. Uh, but next up, we have British Concept, who gave us a few quick thumbnails. And I would question the first two being more like a soldier and an archer, but the third one definitely seems like a mage. But there's not a lot going on here in terms of the kind of character design. They're more like uh, just kind of gesture-y. Uh, next up, DJ Salta14, who gave us a traditional drawing. And judging from the lines, I would say this is probably a really tiny little sketch. Um, and one good way to come up with ideas is to work really small because it creates that vagueness where your mind will once again kind of fill things in from your visual library. Next up we have Dylan Earth, Dylan North, um, and he gave us some kind of nicely laid out, uh, very kind of properly laid out 
thumbnail designs. Uh, we got a couple notes, but um, I like his layout. It's very proper. It kind of showcases his designs very, very professionally. And Fisk Pudding 127 also showcases his designs in a very proper way. Very, very simple thumbnails that kind of showcase different things. And he wrote Claw here, so we know what's going on. Uh, but I like these. They have like interesting head ornaments and stuff like that. So, you know, kind of some interesting stuff to look at. Next up, we have Flick Dizzle, who gave us this uh, thing, which doesn't seem that much like a female mage. I don't know. There's nothing really magey about it, and I, I'm kind of wondering if you already had this finished and you just kind of wanted to showcase it. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a nice traditional rendering, so that's good. I like the kind of dull background. Uh, so next up is Four Gameplay. Gave us, once again, three different thumbnails. Um, and I like the, the I like that they're kind of very female. You can tell they're female, very dressy. Uh, the second one kind of has this weird shape to the bottom of the dress, which might look a bit awkward in motion. Uh, but anyway, next up we have Fusobotic. Fusobotic uh, kind of looks like a character here with like a more battle-ready gear uh, and form-fitting and stuff like that. But they have a little uh, staff. And I guess that's something you guys always want to think about is how they're doing the magic. I didn't really do that in my design, but you guys should. Uh, so next up, we have Glamdrell 1980. Uh, once again, like a cloaked hooded figure. I like the kind of touch of the bounced colored light against the figure, though. That kind of gives it a nice little touch to make it a little more interesting. Uh, next up, we have Green Lawn Mover. Lawn, not lawn mower, lawn mover, and he really went uh, really impressionistic with these. You can tell they're really extremely loose, um, and I don't even quite read the second one in my mind. Uh, but the nice thing about loose things is you look at them a lot, and eventually your brain can form interesting things. So next up, Ha Mu Mai. Um, gave us a few different thumbnails along with some color palettes, but I would have liked to see the colors actually on the um, characters because as the pretend art director, I don't really know what you're implying with those colors. Um, so next up, I'm Rooney L. I think you were the first one uh, to submit something. I think you did it like 10 minutes after where you're, after the video went up. So thank you for your support. And it's always nice to be the first one to kind of get things started. But you have a nice design here with a couple interesting thumbnail colors going on with the purple. Uh, next up, Jonas2560. Um, kind of give us some very silhouette -y stuff, which I like. I love silhouettes. Uh, but I would say the second one and third one don't seem that magey to me. Third one kind of seems like a mermaid, and the second one seems like a lancer or something. That's just the impression I get from looking at them. Uh, just Time Ticking went with a very different approach, and they kind of went with this African um, kind of uh, witch doctory, I would say, theme. It's kind of very uh, shaman -y. Um Definitely different than the rest of the designs, which is always nice to see. Very tattoo-y and um, unique. Uh, next up we have Kechi-san with his Blood Witch. Um, and I would say it's important to think about your kind of your design and your outfit in that you want to think about how it's going to work uh, when the person's like in different gestures. So maybe with their arms down this would look kind of weird maybe. I'm not sure how it would drape um, with the arms down. Uh, but next up we have Kirpid who has really great color presentation. I love the kind of mix of blue and orange, especially on that middle piece and stuff. Uh, I don't know what the bottom left one was. It looks like it's inspired by Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl or something. Uh, but I love your presentation. Um, also, Conkeys, Conkeys, Conkeys. Once again, I love the colorful presentation, especially you have two very uh, different colored designs. And I love the one on the left because of the white hair. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, it's kind of very neon-y and kind of has this nice glow to it. So great job on the colors. Uh, next up, we have Lucas Sight of Doom. Um, he gave us a kind of very wintry mage. Um, it looks like a kind of... I don't know, it kind of has a more modern feel, just maybe because the look of the clothes, they look like more of a modern type hooded stuff. And uh, But otherwise, it's a nice design. Um, Lude Ooze, uh, 
let's see we have three different designs and they're they're pretty different so it's always nice to have that variety going on uh it looks like one on the left is more sinister and then we have one on the middle who's like more of a battle mage and i love that kind of uh dress outfit with the little things flying off uh next up lido mina lido ladomina um two uh quick designs here just showcasing kind of really basic uh uh design elements uh kind of traditional stuff uh, but that's always a good idea it is to have something traditional a lot of times art directors are looking for that uh, so we have mars mathic gave us a simple kind of foresty once again i don't know what i'd call it, like an amazonian kind of feel uh, with just kind of loose leaves hanging and, you know, maybe some kind of headdress. And I don't know, it doesn't feel that magey to me, but maybe it could be. Um, Naruto Moon Kun um, gave us some stuff, but I would say this, it looks like these are more like uh, scenes rather than character designs. Um, I did things like that when I was doing my environments because that's important for environments. But for characters, you just want to have the full character uh, showcased. So, painting Hunter full gave us four different designs, and there's some nice little detail stuff. I love that bag with the little skull head thing on it. Uh, that's a great look. Maybe it's even a book with like a with like a shoulder strap or something. So I like that. Uh, next up, Rev V P L, and this just looks uh, great, just from like a like a basic, really impressionist rendering style. It's very simple, but the colors make it look very proper, and it looks you know, like it could easily be rendered into something more believable. Uh, so good job with keeping it very painterly. Uh, next up is Thomas Ng Concept Art. And we have three different designs with uh, similar colors. So that's kind of a good idea to try as well, is to kind of have the same palette, but see if you can come up with three different designs, um, all kind of using the same, that look like they match each other. Uh, so the middle one was probably the most interesting. I don't know. Uh, so next up, Winter in Berlin. And we have two uh, kind of loose, dark, silhouette thumbnails. And I like this method of thumbnailing where it's kind of very rough. And you just kind of focus on these kind of uh, more uh, shapes in your design and stuff like that. Uh, next up, we have Wood Raven 123. Oh, my, my throat's getting dry. But I like the one on the right more so because it has that cloak of stars. And, you know, it kind of seems very more like it would have more potential to go into a finished design that's really interesting uh, with presentation. Uh, so next up, Z Giant Shroom. So you kind of uh, just kind of gave us looks like three sketches, but you colorized them. So that's that's kind of an interesting idea on how to differenti differentiate them and also give them a little more personality of their own. Uh, so the one in the top left seems to have some interesting kind of scroll stuff going on. And next up, finally, is a name which I will never pronounce, and I've just been copying and pasting it. Um, and he gave us four different thumbnails that are all kind of nice and interesting looking. The one on the right looks a bit like Bridget from Guilty Gear. Finally, that is it for the thumbnails. Um, and uh, my voice is completely hurting right now, uh, but I would like to thank everyone for participating. It was really great to see all of these, and, uh, and now I just need everyone to participate once again, and that is to talk about which design they would like to see rendered into a finished uh, illustration. And you can pick from any of these designs, you can pick elements from any of them, and uh, stuff like that. I certainly have my own favorites. I guess that was kind of obvious, though. Uh, but it would kind of be interesting to see what you guys think. You, I'm sure you guys see things differently than I do with your different eyes and your different visual libraries. Uh, so comment, and uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for participating.